Akshara Naguru, and today I'm going to be presenting my science fair project, Facts on Facts. So what's my project about? My project is on fat and fatty foods, which of them are healthy and which of them are unhealthy. My experiment is on extracting fat from commonly consumed foods, such as potato chips and chocolate. So why is my project interesting and important? Well, it's interesting because we have a lot of questions about fat, and we always talk about fat, right? It's really important because if you eat unhealthy fat or if you eat too much fat, it can lead to serious problems, such as heart problems and stroke. So why did I choose this project? Well, right now, as I said before, healthy lifestyle is like the trend and everyone's talking about it. It's about like looking fit, about weight and being healthy, and fat is the main factor in all these. And I had some questions myself. Is fat necessary to function? Do we need it to survive? And are all types of fat unhealthy, or are there some that are healthy? So the question I had to talk to. So my question was, how much fat is in your food? Like the common foods that I'm going to be taking? And would it be similar to the information that's provided on the nutrition label? Like, will it be the exact same, or will it be around it? And which fat is healthy, if there are any fats that are healthy? So my hypothesis. Well, I estimated that there'd be four grams of fat in the potato chips, three grams in the almonds, and four grams in the chocolate. And this is all based on the information provided in the nutrition label, because it has to be within range. So how does my project answer my question? Well, my project is on extracting fat from these foods, so we will get the approximate amount of fat. And we can compare it with the information provided in the nutrition label to see if it's similar around it. And I also researched on this topic to learn more about fat. So what's fat? Well, when you look at a food, you can't tell how much fat is in it because there are so-called things called invisible fat. And it's really hard to look at them because you can't see the chemical structure. So this is the chemical stru structure of fat. So these three are fatty acids right here. And this is a glycerol molecule. And these three bind to form a fat molecule with a glycerol molecule. So do we really need fat? Yes, we do. Fat is really essential to have a healthy diet. It's a source that the body can't make by itself, and it helps absorb vitamins that only fat can absorb. And it also plays a really important role in brain and nerve function. So my experiment is on extracting fats. So as you can see here, I have six mason jars. I have one named almonds, chocolate, potato chips, and then another one with potato chips acetone, chocolate acetone, and almonds acetone. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking three foods, almonds, Lay's potato chips, and chocolate, and I'm going to be extracting fat from them with acetone. So to make sure that each of the jars are the same weight, I measured them using a digital scale. So I'm going to be weighing three of the foods of 10 grams in each of the jars. I already know that each jar is 245 grams. Now I'm going to be weighing the chocolate chips, 10 grams. So now I'm going to be weighing the potato chips. So I'm going to be taking each of the foods and placing them into baggies and I'm going to hammer them down so they're all crushed. So now I'm going to be hammering down and this is the fun part as you can just totally go crazy. So I'm done crushing them and I'm going to be placing them back into the mason jars. Getting the chocolate one now. These are the chips. So we're going to be doing the awesome fun part now. We're going to be pouring the acetone into the three jars. So I'm going to be pouring 20 milliliters of acetone into here. And then I'll be pouring it into the jars. So I got 20 milliliters. I'm going to be pouring it into the almond. Perfect. Now I'm going to swirl it for two, around two minutes. So I'm done swirling it and I let it settle for a bit. <laughs> now I'm going to be pouring it into the almond acetone jar with a strainer. I'm almost done and I think you can see that the almond is left behind and you can see the acetone and the fat in there. To make it easier for myself, I already uh, poured the acetone in a smaller bowl. So I'm going to be doing the potato chips next. So I'm going to be straining the potato chips now. I'll be pouring the chocolate one now, and remember it's 20 milliliters. After you've done that, you just swirl it. So last but not least, so 
I'm done with each of the three ones, <laughs> acetone jars. I'm going to be taking it outside and placing it outside. So I'm going to be placing it out here so that the acetone evaporates. I know that the acetone has evaporated when there's no smell. So the acetone evaporated from the ex like extracted fat, as you can see. So this one is the potato chips and it's super cool. This one's the chocolate fat. You can already tell by the color that it's chocolate. <laughs> and this one's the almond. I'm gonna be weighing them to see how much fat was in the 10 grams that I weighed. Like this jar itself was three, I mean, 245. And we're gonna weigh it to see. So the potato chips is 247. So that means there was two grams of fat in those 10 grams of potato chips. Now we're gonna go to the chocolate acetone, 250. So it had 245, the jar, right? And now it's 250, which means that there's five grams of fat. This is the almond, 248. So there were three grams of fat in the 10 grams of almonds. So I'm gonna be writing down the amount of fat that we had in here in my log book. And now we can compare it with what is written in the nutrition facts. Okay, so for the potato chips, it says per 50 grams, there's 18 grams of fat. So you just have to divide that by five, which is around like 3.6. So what I got for the potato chips was I got two grams of fat that was in there. And they are saying around like three to four grams, which means that we actually found out that there's less than <laughs> three grams in the potato chips, which is really interesting because I thought I'd be maybe more. Now we can look at the chocolate chips. So in the chocolate chips, it says for 15 grams, there's 4.5 grams, which is pretty cool. And I got 10 for 10 grams. There were five grams of fat, which is definitely not what's written in here. So we got actually more than how much is written in here. We've got more fat. Very interesting. Next, we've got the almonds. And the almonds, it says per 45 grams that they have 23 grams. So if you were to divide that, mm, you would get around five, five grams. And we got only three grams for the 10. So this one's also less than what is written in here. It was so cool to see the results. It was amazing. So just a recap of my experiment. These were the materials that I used and the variables. So my manipulated variable was the type of food. I did three different foods, the potato chips, the almonds, and the chocolate, right? The control variable was the amount of each food. I did 10 grams of food for each one. The acetone, I had 20 milliliters for each one. The time to evaporate, it was around four hours. And the same area, as if we're all in the same area, they had the same area to evaporate. And the time was swirling, which was two minutes. So my experiment observations and my conclusion. Well, for the potato chips, I took 10 grams of food. Two grams was extracted of fat. <laughs> And the quantity of fat mentioned on the label was 3.6 grams per the 10 grams. So actually I got less than that, I got less fat extracted, which means that this isn't that accurate, which is interesting. The chocolate, I took 10 grams of the food, the same as potato chips, and the amount of fat that was extracted was five grams. And the quantity of the fat mentioned on the label was three grams. So that means I got more fat in the food than what was written in the nutrition label. Very interesting. <laughs> So maybe it isn't as healthy. <laughs> I think we all know that though. Almonds, the same amount of quantity was 10 grams and the quantity of fat that was extracted was three grams and the quantity mentioned of fat was five grams per 10 grams of almonds, the same amount, which is interesting. Like the potato chips was less than what was written on the nutrition. So now we know how to attract, extract fats and now we know how much fat is in these common foods. So how does acetone extract fat? Well, acetone is a non-polar solvent. Same as fat, it's also nonpolar. Acetone only dissolves nonpolar molecules like fat. So when fat is mixed in with the acetone, it becomes a solution. If you leave the solution outside, the acetone will evaporate and then you're left with the extracted fat. <laughs> so are there different types of fat? Have you ever noticed at the nutrition label that there's two different words underneath the fat? Well, those are the two different types. Those two are saturated and trans fat. And why don't they add up to the total number of fat? That's because we have unsaturated fat as well. So the unsaturated fat, which is not really written there, plus the trans and the saturated is a total number of fat. So what facts 
or healthy, and which ones are unhealthy. So there's three types of fat, as I said before, unsaturated fat, saturated, and trans. Unsaturated fat also has polyunsaturated and monounsaturated. Those are just two different chemical structures of unsaturated. This one's the healthy one. So you want to have a lot of unsaturated fat. It's derived and found in plant-based foods and oils, and it's shown to improve blood cholesterol levels and blood sugar regulation. Saturated fat is the unhealthy one, so you want to try to limit this one. It's derived and found in animal sources, and it's linked to higher cholesterol levels and a higher risk of heart disease. Trans fat is extremely healthy, so I would try to limit or even avoid these ones. These ones are derived from food processing and do not occur naturally, so these are artificial, and they're found in commercially baked and fried foods, so fast foods. This one increases risk of heart disease and stroke. So the nutrition label information. So these are the three foods, the potato chips, chocolate, and almonds that I used in my experiment. And this was how much was written on the nutrition label. So the amount of saturated fat that was shown for the potato chips was 0.4 grams. The trans was 0 grams. And the total was 3.6. So that means that there's 3.2 grams of unsaturated. So it's not as much of unhealthy fat in this one. But there are a lot of carbohydrates. But that's a totally different topic. Chocolate has 2 grams of saturated fat and it has 0.07 grams of trans fat. So that means the 0.3 unsaturated, and the total is three. So this one has a lot of unhealthy fats in this one. So obviously try to avoid this. I know that we all can, we love chocolate. <laughs> Almonds has two grams of saturated fat, and it has zero trans and five in total. So that means three grams unsaturated. So this one's like, okay, you would try to limit these ones, maybe not avoid them, but you can try to limit these ones. So these are some common foods that contain unhealthy fat. So saturated fat, one of the unhealthy ones. Some of them are milk, white chocolate, cake, processed meat, fatty meat like lamb, butter, and full dairy products. So try to restrict some of these ones. Trans fat, try to avoid these ones. Cookies, microwave popcorn, frozen pizza, and french fries. So french fries, fast food, these are all unhealthy. So try to avoid these ones. So eating healthy. So to eat healthy, you need to avoid trans fat. So make sure to look at the packaging label, and if it says trans fat, do not eat it. Also, companies and businesses are not required to write trans fat on the label if it has one gram or less of trans fat in it. So you need to look for the words partially hydrogenated. Also, try to reduce saturated fat and replace it with unsaturated fat. And obviously eat more foods with unsaturated fat because we need unsaturated fat. And forget no fat diets, you need fat, okay? Adults need two to four tablespoons of fat per day. Obviously, these are from unsaturated sources. So, oils. Since we've been talking a lot about fat, I wanted to touch base on oils. There's so many cooking oils out there, and it's kind of hard to decide which oil to use when you're cooking. That's why I wanted to research about it and tell you guys some information about them. So, olive oil is very healthy. I would definitely suggest you try using this oil when you're cooking. It's high in monounsaturated fat and contains some polyunsaturated fats, and it's linked to better heart health. Canola oil is very healthy as well, and it's high in polyunsaturated fats, and it helps cut cholesterol levels. Sunflower oil is healthy. It has a mix between monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, and it helps reduce inflammation and protects against cholesterol. Vegetable oil is moderately healthy and moderately unhealthy. It's in between. It has a mix between monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. It can increase blood sugar pressure and helps lower bad cholesterol levels. This one's in between because it consists of different types of oils. It's not one full oil. <laughs> Coconut oil is unhealthy. I would definitely suggest that you avoid this one. It's high in saturated fat and it raises blood cholesterol levels and worsens lipid profiles, cholesterol profiles. So what's cholesterol? I've been talking a lot about cholesterol, which is why I wanted to explain it to you guys. Cholesterol is a fat-like waxy substance in your blood that helps your body make cell membranes, hormones, and vitamin D. Your liver makes cholesterol. Saturating and trans fat causes your liver to make more cholesterol than what you need. You can also get cholesterol from foods like milk, fish, eggs, and butter. A lot of dairy in there. High levels of cholesterol can increase your risk of heart disease. So with high cholesterol, you develop fatty deposits in your blood vessels, which grow and make it difficult for the blood to flow through your arteries. Sometimes those fatty deposits can break and suddenly form a clot that can cause a heart attack or stroke because the blood cannot flow to your brain. And acknowledgements, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.